for today the number of those baptized in Christ will be increased, and we offer you our support in raising your child in the practice of the faith. Therefore, brothers and sisters, let us prepare ourselves to participate in this celebration, listening to God's word, praying for this child and his family, and renewing our commitment to the Lord, to his people. So I ask you first, parents, what name do you give your child? What is it you ask of God's church or Christian this afternoon? Are you good at asking for baptism for your child? You're undertaking the responsibility of raising him in the faith, so that keeping God's commandments, he may love the Lord and his neighbor as Christ has taught us. Do you understand this responsibility? Yes. Now that the godparents are ready to help these parents in their duty as Christian mother and father. Christian, the Church of God receives you with great joy. In her name I say and sign you with the sign of the cross, Christ our Savior, and after me your parents and godparents will do the same. celebrations of the church, we listen to the reading of God's Word. This is a passage from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. People were bringing children to Jesus that he might touch them, and the disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he became indignant and said to them, Let the children come to me. Do not prevent them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Amen. I say to you, Whoever does not accept the kingdom of God like a child will not enter it. Then he embraced them and blessed them, placing his hands upon them. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to the Lord Jesus Christ. That uh, scene from St. Mark's Gospel is one of the iconic uh, fixtures in our Christian imagination. As we uh, think about it, I remember seeing it for the first time on a wall mural in the uh, kindergarten that I attended in Brooklyn School of Elizabeth. It's frequently seen in stained glass windows and so on. Uh, because of the, uh, the episode speaks to us in a very powerful way. Everybody, of course, uh, is sort of fascinated by the innocence of children, young children in particular. In but uh, we think of this episode in the lives of these individuals, these small children, I get the mental picture of Jesus sort of being surrounded, kind of climbed over by all of these uh, children. And uh, the disciples see this, they think this must be upsetting to Jesus, so they're anxious to get the parents to get the children under control. And we hear that Jesus notices it and gets angry. And uh, it's one of the few times we hear Jesus being angry in the gospel. And in this case, he's angry at his own disciples. The reason is that they have so misread the situation. Uh, he, they think he's upset by it, of course he was not. And so he warns them, let the children come. Well, there's something about that, of course. It was wonderful to those children and their families. Maybe years later, the parents would inform the children, do you remember where you were when you met this Jesus and everybody was talking about? The episode is a beautiful one, but it has more relevant than just for those children and those families on that day. It really is their gospel by St. Mark to remind us that this is the whole reason the Word became flesh, the whole reason that Jesus took on our humanity and became one of us. It was to make God accessible to us on our level. So the gospel really isn't about children, it's about all of us being able to have that access to our God. Well, the church spends a great deal of effort and energy in raising children, helping them, forming them on the faith. But most of us who have such history realize that religion is not good stuff. Religion is something that is meant to support and sustain some of the deepest commitments and responsibilities that we have in life. And so, if a uh, Christian is going to live up really to his name, Christian, if he's going to uh, realize 
told us what happens this afternoon, it's going to be because he is surrounded by a community of faith. First of all, parents, godparents, extended family, the community of the church, all of us together, giving him an example by the way we try to live out our own Christianity. It's not always easy, but even the struggle to live it out is a very good example for our children. We're told that the little girl, born today, has one of three chances to live to be 100 years old. Well, that's really probably closer to moving toward the head. The little boys aren't very far behind. It's the first time in human history that we can say that, that a significant percentage of the human family will live close to 100 years old or beyond. Well, just think of all the good that can be accomplished by Christ through Christians and all the others being born and baptized these days as they grow in the understanding of what happens today. Today is sort of like planting a seed. It's very definitely changed. He has moved from the non-baptized to the baptized. He's now going to be fully a member of the church. But uh, to understand on that fact, he's going to look for all of us. What does it mean that he has been baptized into practice? He's not going to grow by himself. Will grow because of the effort that we put into it. So I really take a long view. And uh, today, of course, is your focus. But I look beyond, maybe 25 or 30 years, when he's sitting where you're sitting and presenting your credential for that. You're here because of those who've gone before us. We have grandparents here today. And great grandparents? Yeah. yeah. Isn't that wonderful? Well, none of us would be here without them. And they have brought us to faith. All of us are going to work together to bring Christians an understanding of what the day is all about. So, brothers and sisters, let us invoke the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. For this child about to receive the grace of baptism, for his parents, godparents, and the all who share the life of grace and baptism. In response to each of these uh, petitions, hear our prayer. This child new birth and baptism through the radiant divine mystery of your death and resurrection. Join me to your holy church. Lord, we ask you, hear our prayer. Make him a faithful disciple and witness to your gospel through baptism and confirmation. Lord, we ask you, hear our prayer. Lead him through holiness of life and the joys of the heavenly kingdom. Lord, we ask you, hear our prayer. Make his parents and godparents shining examples of faith to this child. Lord, we ask you to hear our prayer. Keep his family always in your love. Lord, we ask you to hear our prayer. Renew the grace of our baptism in each one of us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. I said before that we are members of a large community of faith that stretches back in time to the Old Testament great heroes of the Bible, through uh, Jesus' words and apostles and succeeding generations right down to today. Uh, but it goes even beyond that to the future the generations yet unborn. We call it the community of the saints, the holy ones, called the life of King Christ. And we call now some of those great figures of our past and pray for us that is the response to each of the invocations. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us. St. John the Baptist, pray for us. St. Joseph, pray for us. St. Peter and St. Paul, pray for us. St. Anne, pray for us. St. Michael, pray for us. All holy men and women of God, pray for us. We have now a prayer of exorcism and the first anointing for battle. Exorcism is a scary word, and if you're thinking of the book or the movie, uh, they were very powerful, of course, uh, and we're not discounting the reality, the possibility of evil taking that very uh, sort of technical and Hollywood form. But uh, the real danger of evil is that it usually slips below the radar. It's much more commonplace. Uh, the last time you were in touch with evil is not the last time you saw some of the thorns and the tail and the Last time you felt pushed toward intolerance, greed, selfishness in some way, 
all of that is evil. And it's part of this world that is a fallen world. It is something now that's in our DNA. From our first parents who are refusing to do things God's way, insisted on doing it their way. That's the old story of sin. It's replayed over and over and over again. Well, baptism frees us from the guilt of original sin. But we continually weaken. It's in our spiritual DNA. We have this tendency toward wanting to do it our way. Well, uh, a Christian has been born into a world that's very beautiful, but it's also a world that is flawed, a world that is marked by some institutionalized evil and violence. And if he's going to be dealing with all of that in a positive way, changing it, transforming it as best he can, resisting that lure, it's going to be because of the grace of God. So we pray now that uh, God will break that power of Satan in his life. Uh, so that he will be free from original sin. And then the anointing takes place at the base of his throat, so the man can loose him. He's there so I can get the base of his throat. Uh, and the anointing, the anointing means the, the way in which God's grace, symbolized by the oil, works itself into our very life. It is there to strengthen us for our lives as uh, Christian believers. Almighty and ever living God, you sent your Son into the world. Drive out from us the power of Satan and the spirit of evil. Bring the human race, rescued from darkness, into the marvelous kingdom of your light. We humbly beseech you to free this child from original sin, to make him the temple of your glory, and to grant that your Holy Spirit may dwell in us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. May the strength of Christ the Savior protect you. As a sign of this, we anoint you with the oil of salvation. The same Christ our Lord who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
For your part, we must strive to bring him up in the faith so that this divine life may be preserved and stay in his sin and may grow in him day by day. If your faith makes you ready to accept this responsibility and mindful of your own baptism, renounce sin and profess faith in Christ Jesus, the faith of the church which this child be baptized. And we ask that we all respond, I do, we to these questions. Do you renounce sin so that to live in the freedom of the children of God? Do you renounce the lure of evil sin and have no mastery over you? Do you renounce Satan, the author, and friends of sin? Now we profess our faith, we believe in God, the Father Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth. We believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and was seated at the right hand of the Father. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the union of the saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. It's our faith, the faith of the church in every age and every place. We are proud to confess us in Christ Jesus our Lord.
little bit like putting on the bright to the of this uh, symbolic garment reminds us of that new personality that the person has to put on. First, you become a new creation and clothe yourself in Christ. May this white garment be a sign to you of your Christian dignity with your family and friends to help you by word and example. Bring it unstained into eternal life. Amen. Amen.